My name is Jared Maurice Adams, and I am the co-founder of Life After Justice. But before there was a life after justice, I found myself fighting for my life and justice. In June of 1998, I graduated high school at the age of 17. But instead of starting college in the fall, I started a 28-year sentence in a maximum security prison. I cannot begin to explain to you what that was like at the age of 17. But it all began with one lie. I told my parents I was going to spend the night over a friend's house. But instead, I snuck to a college party in Wisconsin. My wrongful conviction was based on one thing, and that was solely the word of one girl. There was no evidence of a sexual assault because there was no sexual assault. My trial consisted of just the testimony of one young lady, no doctor, no other evidence at all presented. My original sentence was 20 years in prison, but my attorney failed to do his job and it resulted in me receiving even more years in prison. He failed to call the one witness that could have provided my alibi and proved my innocence. You see, I was playing video games at the time I was supposed to be committing this alleged crime. And when I was originally given the 20 years, I failed to show remorse to the judge because I did not commit this crime. And she gave me an additional eight years in prison. The significance of this eight years in prison moved my security level up from a medium to a maximum and eventually a super maximum security prison. So at the age of 17, I was amongst grown men incarcerated. I can recall every month, every week, and every hour spent behind bars. For 102 months, I was relocated from one prison to the next. And these prisons housed both maximum and super maximum security prisoners. So in other words, again, at 17, I was housed with the most dangerous men in the state. Every week, my mother and my aunts would send me a letter. It was the strength of their encouragement that gave me the strength to treat each of the 3,000 plus days as if I was going home the next. The stories of prisons being violent is very real, but the one thing that I remember that shook me to my core was the wrinkles and creases of anguish that lined my mother's forehead as she saw me in the visiting room. 74,000 plus hours, I shared a cell the size of a broom closet. One of the men I shared a cell with was serving a sentence for two murders he committed. He read over my transcripts and he sat me down and he told me, look, you need to grab a pen and write as many people as you can. You're 17 years old and you do not deserve to be in prison. Eventually, one of the letters that I wrote made it into the hands of the Wisconsin Innocence Project. They came, they interviewed me, they took my case, and they argued it in June, in June in, I believe they argued it in June of 2006 in front of the, West, in front of the, the Chicago uh, Court of Appeals, which is called the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. They argued my case in June 2006, and I was finally released from prison in February of 2007. Thank you. Although I was grateful for being home, I went in at 17 years old. I was unable to brace my family without handcuffs until I was 27 years old. So I left, and we're having get-togethers, cookouts. I come back home, and now I'm at funerals, and I'm taking them to doctor's visits. The cost of wrongful convictions 
don't just end with those who are wrongfully convicted. They ha you have to look at it and aggregate what happens. Families are affected when you're inside and when you come home as well. $32 on my inmate account is what I was released with. The courts ordered my release, so I had to leave with the prison shoes that I had on. I received a check a week later for $14. They charged me for the orange prison shoes I had no choice but to wear home. Eight and a half years taken from me. But in those same eight and a half years, God will perform a miracle that you see standing before you today. 102 months taken from me, the same 102 months. I will graduate with my associate's degree in criminal justice from South Suburban Community College. I then went on to graduate from Roosevelt University with a 3.9 GPA and my bachelor's in criminal justice. I would like to tell you I knew how I was gonna to get to law school, but I absolutely did not know. I filled out for a scholarship, and I won a scholarship of $40,000 from the Chicago Bar Foundation. I received this money. The, the, I was the only one who could receive this scholarship that year, and it just happened to be the same year that I graduated from Roosevelt. That's not luck. I was meant to be here in front of you guys today. I took the $40,000 that I was given, and I attended Loyola Law School in the fall of 2012. I couldn't forget how many weeks I spent in prison. It was so much taken from me. In the same 443 weeks that was taken, I was able to gain employment as an investigator at the Federal Public Defender's Office. And I was able to perform the same work that was performed in my case and got me home. I won Investigator of the Year when I assisted a nonviolent drug offender get his sentence commuted by President Obama. He was serving a life sentence. And he received that life sentence at 17 years old. And I was 17 years old. So I did everything in my power to assist him getting his conviction reversed. Eight and a half years. If I can do this in eight and a half years, there are more men and women wrongfully convicted who deserve to do the same. Zero, nothing is what I came home to. And that's what most wrongfully convicted men and women come home to. I went and tried to get services at reentry programs, and they told me no, because I wasn't a convicted felon. So we, and I say we, another exoneree named Antoine Day, who was also wrongfully convicted, we created Life After Justice. Life After Justice is designed to do exactly what happened in my life, and that's duplicate what is happening today. To bring this all into perspective, me going from a supermax to a law school, I'll say this. My mandatory release from my wrongful conviction was February 2019. Through the grace of God and many angels that assisted, I graduated from law school May 2015. I thank you all for listening and allowing me to share with you my life after justice. There are many more men and women who deserve help and need help. They're wrongfully convicted and they come home to nothing. They leave with a family tree and they come home sometimes after spending so many years in prison and they're the last branch on their family tree. Thank you all for listening. <laughs>